Like I said last week, I love it when this happens on Wednesdays. The only downside is it just doesn't give me enough time at the pool, but I'll make that up later on for sure. So we've been talking about things driving into summer here, the summer weather finally actually feeling like it's here. Last week we covered some great topics. This week summer actually begins tomorrow. So we thought a fun theme, Kate's cheering back there, we thought a fun thing to do would be talking about all things barbecue. And over the last few years, it seems like barbecue has kind of exploded, whether it's been with mobile food trucks, catering divisions, actual restaurants, it's become a unique thing to come into Rhode Island because it's different styles. And what we're gonna hear about today in talking to my guests is that there are, all of these guys represent different styles. And we've got Don who'll be joining me um, from Ocean State Barbecue who's gonna talk about the festival, which I thought was a fantastic thing that him and his team put together there at the Steel Yard. But I wanna get into all the specifics because there's a lot that it entails, including some challenging things for the people participating. So the guests that I have joining me in a few minutes, I'm gonna welcome in Berto. Berto is coming in from Pink Pig. They've got two locations. I wanna give a nice shout out to Ed Brady for helping me arrange and bring him in. I have to now call him Councilman Ed Brady. Um, Don, who I said is gonna be joining me, he's the co-founder of Ocean State Barbecue. He'll be joining me shortly as well. Then we have Jimmy James coming in. Now, Jimmy and I are gonna have some great fun conversations because we have a fascination with something that we both like that's on TV. So it's gonna turn into a fun conversation for sure. And he is from Great Northern Barbecue. He's got a really cool announcement that he's gonna make with us as well. And then my last guest is gonna be Michael. Now Michael joined me uh, probably end of last year from Gotta Q and we were talking about mobile food trucks and New Year's Eve and the things going on then. They've since then made a lot of changes to the restaurant side of things and I wanted to bring him back because he's got a great operation and a lot of new things that are happening. So he's gonna be my final guest joining me today. So all these great guests, a lot of barbecue, a lot of great things to be able to taste into and I'd like to bring in Berto to get things started. Berto, come on in because I'm going to be eating some of this stuff for sure. What's going Good on? to see you. Pleasure. So Councilman Ed Brady, who we have to thank now, thank you for making this happen. And of course you find the loophole and somehow <laughs> in here I have donuts, donuts. And I know what the answer is, but Ed, I knew you'd find a way to get them in here. So we'll be talking about these donuts for sure in a little bit. But you guys are not that old as at both businesses, really. You're yeah. talking about the, four, the, um, the donut side of things and also Pink Pig, right? Correct. How long have you been there now? Uh, we're talking about a little bit over a year. A little bit over a year. Yeah. Just celebrating that year, Mark, getting mm -hmm. into it. Talk to me about where you're located and the style of what you guys have going on, because is it, it's a different setup in both locations? Yes, correct. Okay, so talk about both locations. Right? <clears throat> so in Jamestown, we have like sort of a, a patio style. We have a couple of benches outside for you to, to sit on and enjoy the weather. That's going to be located at 63 uh, Narragansett, uh, 35 Narragansett Ave in Jamestown, right next to Simpatico. And that is more, you know, service to counter. So you walk up to the pit master, the chef on, on um, working, and you get right, go right from there, go right to the table. You know, very simple, easy, relaxing. And in Warwick location, we are in, um, uh, we're going to be at 63 Airport Road, right uh, across the street from Dave's Market. Hey, you can't miss it, believe me. You see the colors when you're on the Airport Road, you can't miss this location. And the pink pig coming off of the blue on those colors yes, there. Correct. So the difference in each location is that at, at the, the bakery from the, four, the, mm -hmm. the donut side of things, 401, what do we call it? Four Corners. Four Corners, okay. So Four Corners donuts, donuts there, and Pink Pig are combined in the same building in Warwick. But in Jamestown, it's that quick service stop yes, that correct. you're going up to. Mm -hmm. Has Jamestown been open the same amount of time as Warwick? I think it's been a little bit longer than uh, the newly opened uh, Pink Pig with uh, Four Corners. Okay, so the Jamestown location, they got to be loving you down there because Oh, it's yeah, it's, it's insane. I mean, once we open those doors, we have a line probably outside the door. We sell out probably around 3 o'clock sometimes. Really? Yeah, it's, it gets pretty intense. So now, is it a lunch and dinner operation there? Is that what it's supposed to be, or how is it It's more so like a, a lunch and dinner. I mean, we offer the same thing throughout the whole day from, your, you know, your chicken quarters, your brisket, your pulled pork, um, corn, uh, cornbread, everything you can imagine that's... Uh, caters to that barbecue feel we have and if you're not there early we'll sell out really we'll miss out too that's crazy mm -hmm. now you mentioned a pit master correct that's over there so is this something people can visually see when they're in the Jamestown location yes so um, sometimes when we get in a little bit of a rush our pit master has to actually stop service for like 10 minutes to make sure the meats not getting overcooked burnt uh, really turn it around rotating it and the guests love it. I mean, they love watching the chef, the pit master, see what he's doing with the meats that they're going to be consuming. Yeah, I got to say from two perspectives, A, I'd love to watch it, and B, I'd like knowing the fact that he's that detailed about it, yeah. that he doesn't want anything yeah, to get messed exactly. up over there. So Warwick's a little bit bigger because you have Four Corners. Correct. For the donut place. So how is it set up when you walk in there? To the Warwick one? Yeah. So the Warwick one's uh, very um, smaller than the Jamestown location. You walk in, you have your... Um, you have your uh, tenant to be on your left side where okay. you can order donuts from and then she'll actually take your order for what you want from you know the barbecue side of four corners so you're getting a 
dessert yeah. with your barbecue. And what it, just let's cover the donuts first because <laughs> I'm going to be biting one of these very soon. So tell me what you brought here. Vitaly, can you yeah. see those? Because these are amazing. So we have them, um, you know, funfetti sprinkles, uh, strawberry shortcake, sugar cookie, maple bacon with chocolate. Maple bacon. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, they're addicting to that dessert after you get something like this in your belly. So I was going to say, so people have got to be treating this like their, this dessert in the afternoon, right? Oh, yes. So you're open early for these, though? Correct. Okay, and then later on you open it. So Pink Pig is like lunch to dinner again? Yeah, so we open up at 12 here. We end up uh, closing 8, if not earlier, if we sell out. Look at the size of these things. Yeah, What's this one again? Strawberry shortcake. Strawberry shortcake. Oh, that's, these are huge. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's They're awesome. Good. Tasty too. It's making me want to eat a piece of that bacon on there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So tell me what you brought today and then kind of like tell me about the style because your style of what you guys are doing is different from some of my other guests that we have there. Mm -hmm. So tell me what you brought here today. So right now we have, as you see right here, is the quarter leg chicken all dry rub. Um, In-house we make everything from scratch. I'm okay. talking the sauces, the dry rub, anything you can imagine we do from scratch. Um, so we have our pulled pork, our cornbread freshly made by our pastry team, um, brisket over here. Look at this. Yeah, yep, so it's going in my mouth. <laughs> our burnt end Sammy, highly recommend. I mean, we marinate these. Say it again, what is it? Burnt end Sammy. Burnt end Sammy. Yeah, burnt end. Burnt end. Burnt end, okay. So we, what we do is we marinate the beans in a, in a, you know, for 10 hours. And after 10 hours, then we slowly cook it. And we take the burnt ends from like the pulled pork or the brisket and combine it in with that mixture. You're kidding me. That's awesome. And we have our ribs. So you got the Pitmaster in Jamestown. Where did this, like the concept and the style come from? Was it something they liked? Is it something they've researched? Where did, where are they kind I of? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I th believe, you know, Jeff and Ed, they really uh, wanted to cater to something different and more outside barbecue style food. And, you know, they, they've come in contact with some good people, Pitmasters, learned the trade. And they created like a Rhode Island blend with a Texas spice to it as well. So Texas is the kind of style yeah, that you're going Yeah, a little bit over. of Texas. So when you talk about the dry rub on here, is that where that influence is coming from? Yes, correct. Is that going to be hot? Is that spicy? It's a little bit, um, it's uh, sweet and spicy, I would say. Sweet and spicy. Sweet and spicy. And unlike um, any other dry rubs that you guys may have had, it doesn't really come off. You know, it's yeah, sticks it's like, perfect to it. Like, look at that. Especially our wings. You know, we smoke our wings in-house and it's just phenomenal. You, you know, you don't want to stop eating them. Yeah, I can. I've heard that already. That's, and that's my <laughs> trouble when I go to these things is I don't want to stop eating. I don't care how messy I get. I don't want to stop eating them. So these are the items that you brought for us today. What else do you got on the menu over there? Um, we have, <clears throat> I mean, we have ribs. Uh, pick, we pick our own vegetables, cornbread, mac and cheese. Uh, again, we make it all in-house as well um, as far as that goes. So talk about the mac and cheese because I put that up on social media and I swear, like, that everybody went ballistic on the mac and cheese. Oh, it's, it's, it's so good. I mean, we render bacon fat inside of our sauce, you know, it's, that's a, what it was. it's okay. about an hour to make the cream sauce that we do. And but it's we, bacon fat that's going into oh, that sauce. So good. Yeah. Whose just, idea was that? I mean, the pit master. My God, I love this guy. <laughs> Jeff and I, you better make sure you pay this guy enough because he's got to stay there. Bacon <laughs> fat into the cream sauce of the mac and cheese. Correct. So now was there someone else, was, uh, there was a question that I got about the mac and cheese comes, what's, what's on it? Because someone was asking, can they put add things to it? Or? Yeah, you can add anything you want. You can add the pulled pork, the brisket. Um, I would highly recommend the brisket inside of it because okay. you get that you know, good mixture combined with it. And then uh, we sprinkle it with a little bit of panko or breadcrumbs. Oh my God, that's awesome. Sorry, you're making me hungry. <laughs> so in Warwick, generally the lines are a little bit different. People can expect that they can go throughout the day and not yes. have too much of a trouble. But in mm -hmm. Jamestown, I got to imagine you're getting a heavy oh, tourism crowd. As soon as those doors open, that line is just out the door. I mean, it's... It's a little hectic in there, but I mean, people love it. You know, they're cheering on the chef, they're cheering on the pit master. They just can't get enough of it. That's awesome. I love that. So if someone was to come in and they haven't been in before, whether it's Jamestown, because I know I was getting questions of people saying, okay, I saw the one in Warwick. I didn't know on him in Jamestown. A lot of people go down to the beach, mm -hmm. being tourists themselves in their own state. What is something that you would say, or the pit master might say that you think that they shouldn't miss, that they should absolutely try? I would definitely say the brisket. Really? Yeah. Our brisket is, uh, I mean, I've tried a lot of brisket around the state of Ryan, and I mean, it just melts in your mouth. It's just phenomenal. Hmm. I'm going to have to make sure I try that one to make sure. <laughs> It'll go before I have the donut. So the brisket's a must. Yes. And what else? Our What's burnt Sammy. And the, that. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I've never even heard of that before, to be able to have it that way. I mean, to see the process, you know, being on the team, learning how long the process is to make something like this, yep. 10 hours of marination and then slowly cooking, it's just like mind-blowing that to learn that kind of style within this theme. So... In growing, I mean, you have two locations, but in kind of growing the menu, are there things that they're looking at that are influencing them now that they want to kind of do, or is there add-ons they think they're going to make? Um, I think right now we're going to start targeting more seasonal style, um, you know, vegetables as well. Okay. We're going to try to bring in more local produce as well to really try to switch up how we cater to the barbecue style food. You know, especially with the meats, we want to try, um, you know, seasonal flavors that give you that 
reminder of all oh, this is like a nice relaxed summer day yeah so would it kind of be accompaniments the vegetables to it yeah. or things that you would work into the yeah the, working in the flavor palettes with the dry flavor. rubs and all the brines so and that's something we've talked about a lot is that there's a lot of you know this farm to table movement that you can do in Rhode Island and Ed and his team you guys have done this at Thirsty Beaver Correct. you've done it at your other restaurants so you guys have managed to make that happen all over and you Jeff and Ed have both put together a great team so congratulations to them on that so with the season coming in now is that something you think will happen I mean I know the vegetables are just now starting to come yeah, out yeah we, we already started but I mean we um we've talked to our providers go to um, a couple farms you know we gather as much as we can to practice our ingredients first before releasing it to the market. Okay. Now, in Warwick, you mentioned that in Jamestown, it's kind of come as you go and mm -hmm. go up to the counter. In Warwick, it's the same thing, though, right? That's not same any table thing, service? But um, the only time you'll deal with the chef and the pit master is when you actually get the food of your tray of food, you know, and then they can ask those questions. We'll go over the sauces, what we recommend, and to really make sure they're comfortable and happy with the product we're given. And one of the other major questions before I let you go that I got that I'm going to ask, talk to all my guests about today was the catering side of things. Oh, yes. Are you able to do catering? Oh, yes. We do a lot of catering. I mean, especially during the summer. I mean, we're pretty much booked nonstop. So our catering is very unique. We, you know, we give you menus. We can customize menus. Um, we have a on-the-go smoker. So if you have a party, we can bring our smoke machine there. Really? Yeah, cook cook wings, ribs, whatever you can imagine there. That's got to add to the aroma of the party oh, it's itself. So, <laughs> and it's, it's crazy because you go to catering parties like that, and everyone just circles around the smoker with their like mouth drooling, waiting for this food. <laughs> and then as far as uh, Four Corners, too, we do cookie platters, donuts, uh, coffee on the go. I mean, you name it, we can do it. So from the catering side of things, uh, is there stuff on the website? How would they, What's the best way to get kind of set up? Because um, somebody was asking if, if they go in and sit down with someone or as they go on the website and you have set menus? Or? Yeah, we have menus on the website as well. I would highly recommend coming in to speak to um, a manager on site. Okay. You know, it's a better good idea of what you can do as customization for menus and, you know, pricing and what you're looking for and what we can do. And you already mentioned that the summer season at both locations gets busy, but from a catering perspective, you said you have a lot going on already. Yeah, we do have a lot going on, but I mean, I would say at least two to three days prior. That's enough notice for event. people yeah, to do it. two to okay. three days. All right, so we covered the catering side, which I know I got several questions on, and he's, that's a short time frame. For most things that I'm used to, you got to do plan out a lot further ahead. But from graduation parties was one of the things I got asked for someone. The fact that you can bring the smoker, I think, is oh, unbelievable. It's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that aroma to me would make the party mm -hmm. insane. And the fact that you can combine <laughs> these amazing cookies and donuts that Ed has over there would drive me absolutely insane because I'd be starting with these before I went to those. But, Roberto, thank you for making the time. I really, really appreciate yeah. it. You guys got a great thing going on. There's two locations. So, again, I was tagging the Jamestown one in my social media, so I want to mention that. Um, but there is the Four Corners and the Warwick one, which is what I pass. I'll be passing it again today when I drive down to go to an event in Warwick. But check out both spots, especially if you're being a tourist for the day or vacationing down south in the Jamestown, Narragansett area, because you'll be able to get the same great style that you're getting up in Warwick. So, thank you yep. again. Appreciate hey, you making you. the time. It's awesome. All right. All right. I'm gonna give this to you. Out of your way. Don't let these guys eat everything on before I come out there. <laughs> All right. There you go. Thanks, Taylor, good show. Thank you again. All right. So, in doing the research for this segment, I, we came across the barbecue festival. Now, Don and his um, partner there also put together another festival, which we'll talk about a little bit in the interview. But I'm excited because this is a really cool thing in a really cool location. So, if I could welcome Don in to join me and get into a